Anybody feel like reading? If you want to start off, I'll go after you. Genesis 4, verse 1. Hold on. Get a different translation here. I'm going to use Young's literal translation here. Oh. It's going to have a little bit different take on something in here. So I thought I'd read that. Genesis 4, verse 1. And the man knew Eve his wife, and she conceiveth and beareth Cain, and saith, I have gotten a man by Jehovah. And she addeth to bear his brother, even Abel. And Abel is feeding a flock, and Cain hath been servant of the ground. And it cometh to pass at the end of days that Cain bringeth from the fruit of the ground a present to Jehovah. And Abel he hath brought, he also, from the female firstling of his flock, even from their fat ones. And Jehovah looketh unto Abel and unto his present, and unto Cain and unto his present he hath not looked. And it was very displeasing to Cain, and his countenance is fallen. And Jehovah saith unto Cain, Why hast thou displeasure, and why hath thy countenance fallen? Is there not, if thou doest well, acceptance? And if thou dost not well, at the opening a sin offering is crouching. And unto thee its desire, and thou rulest over it. I'll stop right there. I mean, can you just repeat the last part? Uh, which part? From the last... from something about the opening of verse seven. Yeah, this is why I read Young's literal translation because it's going to be different than probably all your other English translations. Uh, if is there not, if thou dost well acceptance, and if thou dost not well, at the opening a sin offering is crouching, and unto thee its desire, and thou rulest over it. I mean, I'm feeling like that's pretty corrupt. Is there not a sin offering? crouching like what oh, wow what how's well, that compared to other translations quite different i think why would abel have to offer a sin offering what sin did he commit i guess this in the sense that all human sin even if they don't know it. That's yeah, that's a good question, animal, Rob. That's, that's why there was an animal uh, offered. That's why there was an animal killed back in chapter three because of Adam and Eve's sin. Yeah. So it's, it's like the Bible doesn't really tell us, but you get the feeling that uh, they knew that the same thing we know, that in Adam all die and that a sin offering is required. And and yeah, and Hebrews 9 tells us, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. And of course, chapter 10 tells us, animals' blood can't take away sin, but it was obviously still commanded to be offered throughout the Old Testament. And it was foreshadowing what Jesus would do. Right. So, so the gospel is preached in Genesis, even before chapter 4. Somehow, somewhere in there. Like, what, what where is it exactly? Uh, or do we, we just over, have to read it into there? Yeah, well, I think chapter, I missed it. Chapter, yeah, chapter three, we went over it. Chapter three, verse 20, 21, something like that. Okay. Remember, remember uh, Adam, they tried, uh, Adam and Eve, they tried to 
make uh, or the man and the woman they hid themselves they tried to make themselves coverings from the leaves and stuff and it wasn't sufficient so god clothed them with the skin of an animal showing god is the one who has to offer the sacrifice he, he offered the first the first sacrifice for sin and the last sacrifice for sin so. i thought it was interesting the way young's put it My look at middle federal versions is a little bit different, but where it says he didn't even look at the present that Cain brought. And uh, a different little version says uh, he, not, he did not look to Cain and to his offering. So it's almost like he didn't recognize either one of them. It's kind of weird. I think uh, most translations probably say uh, he had no regard, mm -hmm. no regard for it. Like he, he did not accept it. Another interesting thing about a different literal version, the LATV, verse one says, And the man knew his wife Eve, and she conceived and bore Cain, and said, I have gotten a man in the help of the Jehovah. And it says, And she continued to bear his brother Abel. It sounds like they could potentially be twins, according to literal. Uh oh, don't want to bring that up. <laughs> <laughs> That's not smiled upon. Uh, well, this is the first time that we've got the phrase end of the days in the Bible. Where's that? Uh, verse three. I think most translations say in the course of time, but literally it's, it literally means end of the days or end of days. I think usually when that phrase is used, the majority of the time it's talking about prophecies, speaking of the end of Judaism, um, especially like in the books of like, well, Deuteronomy and things like that, but also in the prophetic writings and even in Genesis and other parts like Genesis 49, I think it's used again right before Jacob dies. He's prophesying about the 12 tribes last days, the end of their days, but it doesn't seem like that's how it's being used here, but I think the majority of the time it's probably how it's being used elsewhere. Young's literal says that, eh? And it cometh to the pass at the end of the days. Uh -huh. Yep. Interesting. So yeah. why why didn't God like Cain's offering? Well, it doesn't tell us, but from what we know about what the rest of the Bible, uh, we know in the previous chapter uh, what what the man and woman did in and of themselves with the with the leaves was not sufficient so god uh god clothed them with the skin of an animal seemed like there was possibly uh had to be blood and blood involved because of the sin i don't know if this was a sin offering a sin offering or not but if according to verse seven in young's it could be a sin offering it's, it says sin offering in this translation but um and like I said earlier, in Hebrews, we learned that without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness. So if that's the case, it would make sense why God accepted Abel's but not Cain's because Abel's had blood involved. Um, also explains Is why. Is that really God fair died. there? Well, there's also a scripture yeah, in the New Testament I, that I, says. I, I, yeah, I think it's fair. If, if if verse seven is right in this translation, that there's a sin offering crouching, meaning there's an animal right here. You can do the exact same thing that your brother did. Uh, like you, can, you can still uh, offer the same sacrifice your brother did, but he didn't. Instead, he went and killed his brother. But there's also a, a New Testament text somewhere that says that Abel's gift was by faith. 
Do you know right, where that's and, at? Right. Yeah, that's, he, that's Hebrews 11. And everything in there, in that chapter, when it says by faith, it means they followed the instructions. By faith, Noah prepared the ark, right? God gave him the instructions. Noah believed that what God said was going to happen was going to happen, and Noah followed the instructions. God gave uh, a command to Abraham, or to Abram, to leave his country. By faith, he followed those instructions, right? Everybody, in the, by faith, they followed the instructions to walk around the walls once every day for six days and seven times on the seventh day, right? Every, every person <laughs> there, they followed the instructions. The Brandon actually gives some clues potentially why uh, it wasn't accepted. It says uh, a certain four, I guess. And Abel also brought of the firstborn of the sheep and of his fowls, and God looked upon Abel and his gifts. But Cain and his sacrifices he regarded not. And Cain was exceedingly sorrowful, and his countenance fell. And the Lord God said to Cain, Why art thou become very sorrowful? And why is thy countenance fallen? Hast thou not sinned? If thou hast brought it rightly, but not rightly divided it, be still to thee, shall be his submission, and thou shalt deliver him. So it seems like he didn't divide his uh, fruit or vegetables right. And so that's why he sinned. But we also know that this is not the uh, only time that animals are offered in Genesis, even before the law came in with Moses. Uh, Noah, I'm pretty sure Noah probably had some food with him on the ark during the flood, but he didn't offer any of the, the food to God when he came off the ark. He offered animals as burnt offerings. Um, uh, Abraham oh, and, and God accepted that uh, when Noah did that um, Abraham uh, as well did the same thing had animal sacrifices God accepted those so it's not like it was it, it wasn't just something that came along with uh, the law of Moses like that was something going on even in the book of Genesis so Anybody have any other thoughts on the first seven verses? It's interesting that Cain's response to God was to get angry. <laughs> well, a lot of people, that's a lot of people's response when they are not pleasing to God or they find out they're the they find out they're in the wrong. I think a lot of people's responses is to get angry not get repentant. So here um, in the Targum, I was just going to read this. Uh, but he did not receive Cain and his offering with favor, and Cain was greatly displeased, and his countenance changed. And the Lord said to Cain, Why, I pray, are you displeased, and why has your countenance changed? 
Surely if you make your work in this world to be good, you will be remitted and pardoned in the world to come. But if you do not make your work in this world to be good, your sin will be kept for the day of great judgment. And at the door of your heart, your sin crouches. Into your hands, however, I have given the control over the evil inclination and you shall rule it, whether to remain just or to sin. And Cain said to Abel, his brother, come, let two of us go out into the open field. And when the two of them had gone out into the open field, Cain answered and said to Abel, I perceive that the world was not created by mercy and that it is not being conducted according to the fruits of good words and that there is favoritism in judgment. Why was your offering received favorably and my offering was not received favorably from me? Abel answered and said to Cain, I perceive that the world was created by mercy and that it is being conducted according to the fruits of good words and because my works were better than yours my offering was received from me favorably and yours was not received favorably cain said to abel really? there is no judgment and there is no judge and there is no other world there is no giving of good reward to the just nor is vengeance exacted of the wicked it isn't really clear what Abel's good works were better than Cain's. I'm not sure what he meant by that. Kind of weird. Yeah. Maybe a little bit to do with faith, I guess, because Cain said there was mercy in the world. And, or, I mean, uh, Cain said there was no mercy, and Abel said there was mercy. It says, Abel answered and said to Cain, there is good reward to the just and vengeance is exacted of the wicked in the world to come. Concerning this matter, the two of them were disputing in the open field and Cain rose up and against Abel and killed him. Thank you, Brady. Let's see, I'll just go to KGB here, um, verse 8. And Cain talked with Abel's brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? And he said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. And now art thou cursed from the earth, which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. And thou tillest the ground, thou shalt not henceforth yield unto her strength, a fugitive and a vagabond, shall thou be in the earth. And Cain said unto the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth, and from the face, and from thy face shall I be hid, and I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth. And it shall come to the pass that everyone that fireth me shall slay me. <clears throat> and the Lord said unto him, Therefore, whoever, whosoever slayeth Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain, lest any finding him should kill him. And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of the Nod on the east of Eden. little snarky, isn't he? Am I my brother's keeper? Why are they going? Why do we think they went into the field? To hide from God? I don't know. What was your why question? You I missed it. What? What? In any thoughts on maybe why they're going into the field? Mm. 
why did they go out to the field? Is that the question? I guess I missed the question. Yeah, yeah. Well, the only thing I could think of was that, uh, I mean, if that truly is a blood sacrifice, is that Cain's so mad that he says, well, God, if you require a blood sacrifice, I'll show you, and then takes his brother's life. Well, it seems like for whatever reason, after it was done, he didn't want to confess. He didn't want to own up to it. Well, uh, you know, not only did he not own up to it, he straight out lied, didn't he? He said, I don't know. Yes, where's your brother? Something says, about, I don't know. Does it have something to do with um this would be like the first sacrifice? This is the first death in the Bible. Well, Genesis three with that God killing the animal for Adam and Eve, but first human, yeah. First human death. Human. I I think that's why Jesus brings up uh, Abel in Matthew 23 when he talks about all the righteous blood shed on earth from righteous Abel to the son of Zechariah, uh, to Zechariah, son of Berechiah, whom you murdered between the temple and the altar. Truly, I say to you, all these things will come upon this generation. Uh, it's interesting because, I mean, Israel wasn't even a nation. And they get blamed all the way back to Abel. Well, that's why, in my mind, Ezekiel 18 is very clear that God does not punish the father for the son or the son for the father. So the fact that Jesus says all the blood shall on earth going all the way back to Abel is going to be reckoned, is going to fall upon this generation. I think that proves that the great white throne judgment scene in Revelation 20 of all the dead out of Hades was going to be dealt with, was going to be judged before that generation was over with. I don't think God, I don't think God held, you know, the Israelites in, you know, David's day or something responsible for what Cain did any more than God holds me responsible for my, 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 my own father or my father for me. Like it's each person bears their own guilt. Uh, their own sin, as Ezekiel 18 says. So it's just all going to be reckoned with, it's all going to be dealt with within that generation. I don't know how anybody gets around that unless they just think that God does punish the Jews for things like what Cain did, which makes no sense. So the buck was going to stop right there right with that generation not the jews it was the whole of humanity yeah anybody from abel onward between anybody between abel and eighty seventy, anybody who was not jesus or a part of the first fruits anybody who was not jesus or the church um in, the, in that 40 year period from 30 to 70 because they were already in heaven Everybody else from Abel onward, anybody who's ever lived, was going to be dealt with, was going to be judged by, that, by the end of that generation, before that generation passed away. Before generation passes. Yep. Jesus said all these things will come upon this generation. And then in the next chapter, he says... Uh, Truly, I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things take place. And you think that was when he ascended? No, I think when he ascended, that's when he got his authority and dominion and glory, and he got the keys to Hades. And because he got the keys to Hades, uh, and he, and, he, and he prophesied, he said that the gates of Hades will not prevail against his church while he's building his church. 
that for the next 40 years, anytime a Christian died, they didn't go to Hades. They went into the parousia of Jesus. They went into his presence in heaven all throughout that 40 year period. Jewish Christians, Gentile Christians, the Christian martyrs, anybody who's a Christian, uh, the first fruits, they went in that 40 year period. And then from, uh, and then eight by eighty seventy, the Old Testament saints, as well as all the Old Testament wicked, any anybody else who was still in Hades from Abel onward would get reckoned with. Rob, what say you? I'm still looking into the Cain thing, and I, I guess I, kind of. Was thinking, uh, okay, you got uh, Cain seems to come with the offering first, and then Abel. You know, I don't know if it's technically in order, but you know, Cain brings the fruit, whatever it is, and then it's not accepted. But then, yet yeah, Christ is called the first fruit. So I don't know if there's something going on there or not. So is Cain the older one? Yeah. So he's passed by for the younger. Does that not sound familiar? Yeah, that's a and that's a theme that runs all throughout scripture. Also. Uh, and you got several examples, even in Genesis. Um, Isaac, Ishmael, uh, Jacob, Esau, Ephraim, mm -hmm. Manasseh. Hmm. <clears throat> There's that replacement theology again. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't understand like why people can't understand that God fulfilled his promises to the covenant that he made with Israel. And then Part of those promises was that the kingdom was going to be taken away from them and given to another nation. Mm -hmm. Like, that's what God said was going to happen. So I don't understand why people are so upset about it. But I guess they're still upset about it for the same reasons the people in the first century were upset about it. They have different expectations of the way things they think should be. Well, they still believe that Christ is going to be king on earth, the same as Israel was expecting right that's what the yeah, christian the future yeah. is believe yeah i mean i guess if they just want to ignore the entire new testament and ignore the prophecies in the old testament they're welcome to do that but well jesus, yeah and peter was clear next to jesus is already king he's already in heaven yeah yeah he's already he's king now mm -hmm. like such a different but you know what we all believed it at one time all of us Mm -hmm. we all were I mean can you imagine where we'd be now still believing like it's crazy to think that these Christians are literally um, you know all over this war and hoping you know that they all believe it's prophecy not even realizing that they're hoping for the death of over 2 million Jews. You, you know what I mean? Like, that's what, that, that's what has come to pass. Think that, yeah. yeah, that's what has to come to pass. It's the destruction well, of Israel. I mean, do, do they think after that happens, then you're going to have like the man of sin, Antichrist, yes. Mark of the Beast, all that stuff? Well, I think a yeah. lot of... And the funny thing is, that is the Israel... Is get first right the rapture is going to happen first a lot of them believe so they're not going to be here for yeah. it i guess i can't i can't remember well, what yeah, i and believe then, and, then, and then you get into a few different doctrines there too because you have the pre-rapture people believers and the mid and the post and you know it's like well rapture i've you know and they've all we've we've all heard it even the futurist has heard it well rapture the word rapture isn't even in the Bible. It's like, yeah, but 
but it's but it's this word and it's caught up but it's like no no that's the that's the corruption of the bible happening it, it the word in greek is is translated into english caught up you still need to go and have a better understanding of the greek word rather than take the phrase caught up and now let's find another english word to summarize caught up oh raptured well now you're even that much further from the truth you see it's like that's where it becomes corrupted just further <laughs> translating <laughs> words i just read something weird uh, <laughs> back to genesis 4 1 some people believe that he gave birth to a man, not a baby. Say that again, Rob. Some people believe Eve gave birth to a man, not a baby. Oh. Ouch. <laughs> right. Do, do they think Abel was also born a man or just Cain? I'm not sure to get that from the story yet. I guess it's an Adam and Eve. I was gonna say I wonder okay. when I wonder when those people think start thinking that when women have when women have children they're actually babies. This is interesting. <clears throat> Not the Bible, but it's in, I guess, the book of Adam and Eve, the life of Adam and Eve. It says, At that time, Eve told Adam, My Lord, Adam, in my sleep I saw the blood of my son Abel was pouring in the mouth of Cain, his brother, and he drank it without mercy. And Abel beseeched him to believe a little of his blood, and he did not agree to hearken to him, but he drank it completely and he could not at all appear mercy in his body. I wonder. That's why I told him not to drink blood because of that instance, potentially. True or not, hard to say, you know. Well, before we move forward, I, I want to throw in there too that I would think that Abel would be included in the group of people that we read about in Revelation 6, verses 9 through 11. In what? In Sorry, I'm just saying for anybody who's <clears throat> later. Um, if they want to look this up, I think a uh, strong case can be made for Abel, <clears throat> Abel, Abel being a part of the, the voice, the voices of the people in Revelation chapter six, verses nine through 11. The soul, the waters, uh, yeah, I can pull it up. I mean, there's further proof, but without going down that rabbit hole, I'll I'll just refrain from getting into all that, and I'll just I'll just point this out. Uh, verse chapter six, verse nine of Revelation. When he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain because of the word of God, because of the testimony they held. They were crying out with a great voice, saying. Till when, O Master, the holy and true, dost thou not judge and take vengeance on our blood from those who dwell upon the land? And there was given to each one white robes, and it was said to them 
that they should that they may rest themselves a little time till may be fulfilled also their fellow servants and their brethren who are to be who are about to be killed uh, even as they so I would think the uh, fellow servants and their brethren who are about to be killed even as they would be the apostles and the Christians, these being the Old Testament martyrs, people like Abel. Also, you got you also you also got Hebrews eleven, uh, which talks about the Old Testament saints died without receiving what, what was promised to them. Because they could not inherit, they could not uh, reach their goal or their promise or their inheritance until the uh, the Christians in the first century, the first fruits, had received theirs. That's why another reason I think this is the Old Testament saints uh, asking how much longer in this verse. Just came across some interesting information I've never seen before, or if I have, I never noticed. <clears throat> You know, in John 8, 44, where it says, you are of the father, the devil, and desire of your father, you will, he was a manslayer from the beginning. And so mm -hmm. we always say that's Cain or whatever, okay. that the devil is working through Cain. But if you read the book of Adam and Eve, it says that, uh, you know, I just told you that Eve had a vision and she told Adam what she saw and then gabriel comes to adam and says hey don't worry about it there's nothing you can do it's going to happen and so he doesn't try to stop him and they go out to the field uh can enable uh to their individual fields and two demons that look like Cain and Abel also come at the same time and one demon gets mad at the other demon and kills him with a sword and so Cain sees this and gets the idea and the weapon. And then Abel says, don't kill me. And uh, even prayed and Cain still killed him. So I just think that's interesting. If that is indeed true, then potentially the first murder would have been done by a devil or Satan or a demon. Well, remember evil even if that's not the case, it, I mean, I'm not saying it is or isn't, I don't know, I wasn't there, but it, even if that's not the case, in the previous chapter, because of what the serpent did, they died. Like Adam and Eve died as a result of what the serpent deceived her into doing. And, you know, there's different degrees of murder, right? First degree murder, second degree murder, right? There's different degrees just because some just just because someone someone does not have to do the physical act to be held responsible for it if that makes sense i mean that's that's easy I mean, that's, early that's, death could still be considered a murder yeah and, and that's it's easy to show that just because the physical act does not take place does not mean a person's not held responsible for the crime i mean jesus says if a person loves <laughs> don't, if a person hates it's murder right so you just pointed out Revelation six ten, didn't you? Yeah, verses nine through eleven. Yeah. So is that the blood that's crying from the ground? And you know, when God says, "Vengeance is mine," saith the Lord. I think so, uh, and. Uh, remember Deuteronomy 32. Um, remember the Song of Moses, um, w which was about Israel's last days. Uh, I think there's, let me find the verse. Deuteronomy it's 32. It's interesting while you're looking for that, verse 13. The stars in the sky felt earth, they dropped like bright figs from a tree shaken by a strong wind. You know, Here it indeed is. it was if the tree was a fig tree of good and evil and then here these evil entities are compared to figs falling out of a tree or stars falling 
so we know by this that God is just, you know, yes. and what is the scripture? There's another scripture too, that talks about, um, if we seek vengeance, that, that then that is their due justice. Uh, well, That's I'm, why I'm, he says, leave it to him. Yeah. Roman. I know. Roman. Now then we carry, we carry the burden. Right. Yeah, Romans, Romans 12 don't overcome uh, good, uh, evil with evil, but repay, overcome evil with good and vengeance is mine. I will repay. Uh, that's, that's, uh, that's Romans 12, but in Deuteronomy 32, uh, it says, um, their vine, uh, for, for their rock is not like our rock. Even our enemies concede their vine comes from the vine of Sodom and from the fields of Gomorrah. So it's describing Israel in their last days being depicted as Sodom and Gomorrah. You can see that in the book of Revelation, by the way, uh, describing <laughs> Israel. Their, their, their grapes fell with poison, clusters, bitter, uh, serpents, cobras. Uh, vengeance is my, it's, it's mine to avenge. I will repay. In due time, their foot will slip. The day of their disaster is near. Their doom rushes upon them. Skip down to 43. Rejoice, O nations. So nations, Gentiles. Rejoice, O nations, with his people, for he will avenge the blood of his servants. He will take vengeance on his enemies, make atonement for his land and people. You know, I was thinking about this uh, a little bit, you know. Okay, yeah, obviously, you know, we're told don't murder, right? And then yet Cain murders. But then, uh, you know, when it comes to war, it just seems like you're breaking that commandment. But then, uh, you know, I kind of get that with war, you know, it's hard to punish uh, and lock up or whatever you want to implement as a punishment. Uh, you know, you know, you can lock up one or two people but when you have a a whole clan or whatever like in the bible and they go to war you know then it seems like then it's okay it's kind of weird well and i don't know if it's the same word either i'd be curious to know because i know there's different hebrew words like for murder or kill like i i was listening to the uh the exodus series on the Daily Wire with uh, Jordan Peterson, Ben Shapiro, and like a bunch of like different scholars. And uh, I think it was Dennis Prager, or I think that was his name, one of the Hebrew scholars. I remember hearing him talk about, because they were going through the Ten Commandments. And I remember him talking about how there's a different Hebrew word for murder, a different, it's like a different word for murder and a different word for kill. Because obviously yeah. like, it, because if, if, you know, if you're a, you know, chopping up some wood or something and the, the axe head flies off and hits somebody in the head and kills them. Well, you killed the person, but that wouldn't be, that would not fall under the category of murder, right? Like you didn't intentionally do it. There's, there, so you have like self-defense, there's unintentional things. And then there's like what we think of as murder, like intentional, pre-planned, uh, I'm, I'm wondering if that's not the case. Though. I wonder if it's more of a numbers game, because if we look at the first war in the Bible, uh, Exodus seventeen eight, the Amalekites came and attacked the Israelites. So it's a whole bunch of people coming against a whole bunch of people. But when you just have one or two people, it's still a murder. You're still being killed, you know. But there, it's easier to implement a punishment. But then when you're trying to implement a punishment against all the Malachites, the revenge is on a grander scale. It's a larger punishment. It's a war. It's not a, you know, a curse or a vagabond. Or a... Well, and that could be because there's an interesting verse in Genesis 15 where God tells, when God's making a covenant with Abram, and he says to him that, you know, your descendants, they're going to come into this land, but not but not for a while. Uh, it's going to be like in the fourth generation or something of that nature, because the iniquity of the Amorite is not yet complete. 
So, and it's just like uh, Jesus tells Israel in Matthew 23 with the seven woes. He, he tells them, fill up the cup. Revelation 18 talks about the cup overflowing. Like once a nation reaches a point, once a large group of people, uh, once nations reach a point of, of filling up the cup of God's wrath through their sin, through their wickedness, eventually, after enough time passes, God says, okay, enough is enough. Like I've given you three generations or four generations or whatever it is. And then, okay, enough time has elapsed. You're obviously not going to change. I've given you plenty of time. So now I'm going to send in this other nation to wipe you out, which God did a lot with Israel in the Old Testament. Like they went into the promised land or you remember the, the battles like where they, uh, I think was it Joshua or different people, they were holding up. Uh, Moses' hand or holding up his arms and as long as his arms stayed up the people were winning the battle stuff like that yeah that was the one I was just reading that was yeah. the first war in the bible I think and then and, and then you got a lot of them like in Joshua and Judges do a war number in Exodus 18 there So, it says in um, Deuteronomy 21, 1 to 9, if somebody is uh, found slain in the field, in the land which the Lord your God has given you to possess, and it is not known who killed him, then your elders and your judges shall go out and measure the distance from the slain man to the surrounding cities. And it shall be that the elders of the city nearest to the slain man will take a heifer, which has not been worked and which has not been pulled with a yoke. The elders of that city shall bring the heifer down to a valley with flowing water, which is neither plowed nor sown, and they shall break the heifer's neck and there in the valley. And then the priests, the sons of Levi, shall come near, for the Lord your God has chosen them to minister to him and to bless in the name of the Lord. By their word, every controversy and every assault shall be settled. And all the elders of that city, nearest to the slain man, shall wash their hands over the heifer, whose neck was broken in the valley. Then they shall answer and say, Our hands have not shed this blood, nor have our eyes seen it. Provide atonement, O Lord, for your people Israel, whom you have redeemed, and do not lay innocent blood to the charge of your people Israel. And atonement shall be provided on their behalf for the blood, so you shall put away the guilt of innocent blood from among you when you do what is right in the sight of the God. What is he saying here then? Why why is it that a community had to, a whole community had to suffer, offer a sacrifice for being in the wrong place at the wrong time? Well, they they had to uh they had to do sacrifices uh, every, like the, what was it, the Day of Atonement every year? They'd have the, the sin offering, the blood offering, the, the two goats, or the, the scapegoat and the, the blood sacrifice for the sins think, of the people. <laughs> when you read the easy reading version, basically what's going on is <clears throat> they came across a dead body and they're saying, okay, did you kill him? No, I didn't kill him. You must have killed him. No, I didn't kill him. Well, someone must have killed him. And so they're all blaming each other. So basically they say, well, we'll kill this. God says, we'll kill a, uh, a cow. And then that will settle the argument. And then no one innocently will have to be charged with the killing of the body. So yeah, but God knows who did it. But but right, but that, but isn't that animal kind of taking the place of the person who's responsible, who's guilty? No, I mean, is it... no, basically, I mean, it is, but okay, let me read it here. Suppose you find someone has been killed. The body is lying in a field in the land. The Lord your God is giving you to take as your own, but no one knows who the killer was. So basically, they start all blaming each other. And God just says, you know, this is the way. It says to settle it. 
don't yeah don't hold them guilty for spilling the blood of someone who hasn't done anything wrong that will pay for the death of that person basically it was a way to settle the argument because no one really knew who the killer was basically like an unsolved mystery but what happened to, but it was wasn't it in the law that if a person killed someone they were supposed to be killed right mm. I mean, it depends on the circumstances. If it was an accidental killing, then no, no. I mean, then... like murder, like murder, not like accidental, like like pre-planned murder. Eye for an eye. I don't know if it so, was an eye for eye, actually. So if, yeah, if if it seems like what is happening to this animal is what should be happening to the guilty person, who is no one knows who it is. Let's take a home, let's see. So today, punishable. Go ahead. That's the sins that were punished by death included homicide. So yeah, so I think we were stoned, if I remember right. Yeah, was the, uh, that, that was the yeah that was the Jewish way of doing things. Uh, like remember remember what they did to Stephen? Like the Romans, they had to go to the Romans for crucifixion because the Jews did the stonings. Um, so now today it's just an individual that is held responsible because back then it was the community if they didn't know, but today it's an individual or nobody gets punished, right? Do you see well, what I mean? I'd say okay, if, okay. if no one knows and no one gets punished, it's just an unsolved mystery. Right. Okay. I mean, no one so, got punished back then as a community. The cow got punished. Right. So who gets punished today? Um, say for all the abortions. Is it the individual person, like the, the man and the woman? I think I think all do. All, I think all all guilty parties involved. Okay, so, like, so, so, so that, that's punishment. what I'm getting at. Well, does God, does God hold a nation to account? I'll give you an example. China has one child per couple, um, and anything over and above that, um, well, there just wasn't. And if there was, it was abortion or death after birth. So who's held accountable? Is it the nation, the individual's? You know, because it's a it's a national law. Who gets held accountable then? The soul that sins shall die, God says. So, every, goes right up the ladder. Yeah, I mean, anybody involved. I mean, I mean, that's why, that's why in Matthew, that's why in Matthew nineteen, uh, the disciples, when when Jesus explained to them about the whole divorce remarriage issue. The disciples said, because basically Jesus is pointing out there are three guilty parties. Everybody involved with this whole adultery stuff, there's everybody's, all these people are guilty. The the, the man was guilty uh, because he sent his wife away. And now uh, when she goes and commits adultery, that man's going to be held responsible because he put her in the situation to where she couldn't, she had no food, she had no clothing, she had no shelter. She, she was nowhere to go. So she had to go to another man. God's going to hold that that husband responsible for that adultery that happens he's going to hold the woman responsible and he's going to hold the new party who's married to her he's going to hold him responsible too so right, three tougher three question people. for you andrew we're going to up, the ante, up, up the ante on uh, Lori's question okay uh there's a verse that says you're supposed to like you know honor the law right Okay, well, recently, uh, uh, a girl had been, got pregnant at 11. I think it might have been from like, you know, who knows what, I didn't get all the details, but the court ordered her to have an abortion, even though the parents wanted her to have the baby. Right. So oh, I mean, is it, oh, is it, is it a question of like, should we, sub, like the Bible says, submit to governing authorities? Right. Yeah. So, I mean, who? Who would who would be liable then? The, the like we were saying the well, the the law or the you know and it wasn't even a, I don't think it was a a consensual thing. 
I, I can think of two, 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 two biblical examples. One, the, the midwives chose to disobey the governing authorities because they chose to fear God rather than the king of Egypt, and God blessed them for it uh, because they submitted to the higher law, which is God's law, not man's law. And two, Peter, another example is a New Testament example. Uh, Peter and John were arrested, thrown in jail. They were scourged. They were threatened, don't teach in the name of Jesus anymore. And they said, we must obey God rather than men. So, yeah, yeah, yes. too. so, so teach. So, but there's, so yes. a, yeah. there's a thing now called medical kidnapping, right? If you refuse treatment for your child, you lose the custody of your child to the state. So the state is now the parent has parental um, ownership. This is happening. I know it's happened a few times that I know of in Canada. It's getting a little bit more common. So, um, is it the state that's now held accountable? Who's held accountable here? Everyone involved is guilty. You know, if the parents refuse it, the child is taken and it and the medical procedure is forced upon the child. I do not I cannot see that the parents would be held responsible for this no, or the, the child. It, it, no, no, of course not. If, if if a person is stripped away and, and forced to do something against their will, God doesn't hold people accountable for things that are, well, unless you're a Calvinist, I guess, but God doesn't hold people accountable for things that are, are happening to them that, that are, they're forced into doing against their will. Mm -hmm. Last thing that's, uh, you know, as humans, you know, we'll be able to figure that, that stuff out potentially. Say that again, Rob. Uh, so as, as humans, we may not be able to figure that out who really is accountable for all kinds of stuff. I would see, I would definitely say the state, in my opinion, unless the, unless the parents acquiesced. But I know, I know of two couples here and three couples in Canada that lost their child and and it was a forced medical procedure upon the child against the parents' wishes. <clears throat> why, why would the, why was the child pregnant? I, I th I'm, I'm assuming probably molested or raped. Well, then whoever did that should uh, be killed or at least in jail forever, if not killed. Yeah, I agree. But, you know, it's it's becoming um, one. See, the reason they're going after one of the reasons that they're going after this um, lowering the age of consent or taking away the age of consent for uh, um, changing sexes is they're giving the child um, the ability at that age to make decisions saying that they are old enough to make those decisions. And at the same time, they're pushing for the age of consent to be dropped in some states as low as 10 for sex, right? Like they have, there's a method to their madness. If a child is old enough at eight or 10 years old to decide that he wants to be a boy, and to go on puberty blockers and to have his penis removed, then he's old enough to know whether he w wants to have sex or not. It's crazy to give consent. Yeah, I mean, I, I think uh, parents should be uh, making sure their children are not anywhere near places like that that have those kind of things in place. Like, take them out. Don't let them go there. Well, I agree. I agree. Um, the public school is, uh, yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's bad. It's bad in Canada, that's for sure. Uh, in Genesis 4, uh, trying to find where Rob read to, through, six, through 16, 16? I think you read yep. through 16. Yep. Um, well, is, is this, uh, I guess this is the second time in scripture we find 
God having mercy. Um, he had mercy on Adam and Eve by having an animal in their place. Um, and then he had mercy, and then he has mercy here on uh, on Cain. Yeah. 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 As Ring knows, <clears throat> I think it's because the law was in effect potentially. That's why there might have been more mercy. You know, later on when the the law comes in effect, then you have you know punishment so, with stone and stuff like that. It says here, um, but Cain said to the Lord, "My punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, this day you have driven me from the face of the earth, and from my I face." That was weird too. From your face, I will be hidden. Okay, so they're still going before the Lord. They're still offering their um, sacrifices. They're still in relationship with God to a degree. Don't you agree? Verse 14 in the, in the Young's literal translation says, from thy face I am hid. I know the translation y'all were using uh, said will be or shall be hid. makes it sound like in the future from the time he's saying these words. But I wonder, I wonder which one's which one's more accurate with the the tense there? Is he saying, I'm already, even right now, as we're having this conversation, I'm hid from your face, meaning I, I'm already out of good graces with you? Um, or is it in the future, I will be? Like, is, is he saying I am now or I will be in the future? Like, that's just something that kind of stood out. Um, it's also interesting as, uh... Sounds like a bit of a whiner. My punishment is greater than I can bear. This is what got me. I will be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth. And whoever... That, though, that sentence right there. I will be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth. And whoever okay. finds me will kill me. Who Who's looking for him? And who else is there? Well, whoever finds me will, will kill me, meaning in the future, right? Not right now, but in the future, people who find him, he's afraid they're going to kill him. We know Adam and Eve had other sons and daughters. Could be, yeah, but later, he's, later not refer he's, he's not referring to his brother's. Or sisters well, are gonna well, fight him well, and why, kill him. Why, why, why not? He 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 killed he, he killed his brother. Does he not think that his brother can kill he's, him? He's being he's being cast out, right? He's he's being a wanderer in the land. So unless his brothers and sisters are also cast out, like who's the other wanderers? This is where I just have to interrupt because Adam means not only Adam the man with the name Adam, but it means mankind god created mankind on the sixth day he didn't just create but but he created but he took the one man adam and chose him to be the son of god who he obviously had relation with who heard his voice and he spoke with this adam but the rest of the adams i don't know they're just people <clears throat> how, how can Cain build a city by himself just him and his wife where did his wife come from I mean all those stories like you, you just have to go back to the original Hebrew and see that Adam means uh, he created mankind Genesis 5 4 he says he married his sister. the story of the yeah, Bible well. the story of the Bible is about Jesus coming and he comes through the line of Adam right from Adam and Eve and then da 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 da, da. So it's like if I were going to write a family history of my family, I would only be listing in that that history my family. I wouldn't be talking about everybody else in the world or even mentioning, you know, the Japanese or, you know, why? They're not part of my history. They're not part of my bloodline. What about, uh, what do you think about Genesis 3.20, though, where it says Eve is the mother of all living? Eve is the mother of all living. All living. 
the if it's a human she, person she, on the earth, she, it came from Eve. I don't think that it means that. It means like how come through Adam all sinned? Because, because Adam, Adam and Eve, yeah, because he yeah, first man doesn't mean only man, but he was he was the chosen man who kind of like Israel, it's the same story in the Bible. Israel, it was his chosen people. And what was their job? They were supposed to take the word of God and bring it to the other nations. The, the, the Goyim, what are they called? The Gentile nations, those who were without God. So was Adam. Adam was in communion with God, created, you know, out of the dust by God's hand, he blew into his nostrils, the breath of life, and he became a living soul. Well, Eve, uh, I guess in a sense that the two of them fell, right? Where's where's the rest of humanity going to have any salvation if Adam and Eve have fallen and they're supposed to bring the word to the, the nations or to the people? Kind of like Israel. They, they failed. Instead of bringing God to the nations, they let the, the nations, gods, uh, control them. And they fell into sin. Same thing happened with Adam and Eve. Same thing happens with the church today. You know, the church is supposed to be ruling and reigning with Christ. But are they? No. No. Because everybody's walking around sick. Sick in their mind. Sick in their body. Sick in their heart. You know, like we're, we're failing as, a, as the body of Christ. Because we're failing just like Israel failed. Just like Adam and Eve failed. We we have to we have to hear the spirit. <clears throat> yeah, well, so no, it could no, just no, mean no. no. Go ahead, Lori. It says you will be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth. I mean, it could be as simple as you're just not in relationship with God anymore. You know what I mean? His face is hid from you. Right? You're just wandering. What what, what do people have? What kind of life do people have? or hope that don't know him well they they go out and they build for themselves the city see cain cain built a city but what uh the babylon let let us build a tower reaching into the heavens like they all want to be their own god including cain cain wanted to be his own god he wanted his sacrifice he, he didn't care what god wanted for a sacrifice cain was pissed off because you know, he, he worked hard tilling the soil. He, I worked hard, you know, and that's, that's what I brought, you know, what, what did my brother do? He just killed the lamb. He, he didn't, he didn't make the, he didn't make the lamb grow up out of the earth, but the, the lamb just animals, God created the animals and the animals procreate. You don't have to do anything. You just sit back in your lazy chair and you know, what do you got to do? Life is life. Life just grows. But he had to be a tiller of the soil. Like there's that dust of the earth that you're talking about that Rob mentioned, you know, the serpent eating the dust of the earth, right? That's where the people came from was the dust of the earth. Their flesh. So in number 15, um, it says, if anyone slays Cain, why? So what do you guys think about the sevenfold thing? Avenged sevenfold. Yeah, that's a good question. And what is this mark he put on Cain? Except that even if you're outside of God's will, like clearly God died for the whole world, right? So even though Cain had sinned, well, so did Adam. You know, so so did everyone since Adam. And even in our sin, Christ still wants to bring us salvation. He still wants that none should perish in their sin. So so I feel like he put some kind of mark on Cain that if Cain during his life would turn from his sins, you know, and seek the Lord, that he could also uh, redeem himself or, you know, find, find salvation. If there's no punishment for the wicked in the afterlife, then I don't understand what, what sevenfold would refer to. Like, well, like what do you, how, well, how what do you think? Well, well how, how can there be greater punishment than physical death? If, if that's, if, physical death is the end all there's nothing worse that can happen after that then yeah. scriptures like this 
about uh, that might be uh, i think you might be taking that a little bit out of uh, context because seven times the punishment wasn't death the punishment was he was kicked out kicked, kicked out of what out of the face of god and to be a vagabond that was the punishment and so there yeah that's a good question too kicked times. out of what because don't we say that Adam was also kicked out of the garden? So what was Cain kicked out of? Exactly. Well, no, no one's in the garden. Like, no one was in the garden ever yeah. since Adam he got thrown out. So, I mean, and I don't, I, and I do I don't think agree that he got that thrown out. Different, different levels of punishment, but I don't think we can apply that to the afterlife because it says uh, the punishment will be, he says, you know, my punishment is greater than I can bear. He says, whoever finds me will kill me. And it says that they'll be sevenfold the punishment I gave you. And he didn't give him death. So it's going to be sevenfold what God did to Cain. Right. So Cain, Cain was driven out uh, of, the, of God's face. So if, if, if all that, if sevenfold is required, if all that means is they also will be driven out, just like Cain was driven out, how is that greater? No, they could uh, get seven plagues. Who knows what it was? Yeah, seven is something. Rob, I also want to say this about your question. How is Eve the mother of all living? Well, okay. If we if we fast forward to the New Testament that tells us that the man and the woman, the two become one flesh, behold, I speak a mystery concerning Christ and the bride. So if we look at Eve as being the mother of all living, that would possibly, could that be the church? Because everyone's dead in Christ, right? But you have to be born again if you want to be part of the family of God, right? And now you're living according to the Bible. Did you follow me? Or well, too there spacey out there? there like, like could, it, could it be that Eve, uh, as representing the bride, you know, if Adam represents the head, which is Christ, and the two becoming one flesh, well, there's your life. Right? Because if you're not in Christ, well, you're dead already. You're dead in your sins. Right? So that's why I say everybody's walking zombies. They're the walking dead because they don't know God. They're just, you yeah, know, building up whatever. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I'm just thinking may maybe that's a possibility, but um, why use the word Eve? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. What it... yeah, so you're saying I don't know why else. She was the mother of Christ, per se, and then, in a sense. And church well yeah as as the bride of adam in the new testament they said that this was speaking of a mystery that it speaks of christ and his bride not you know it's it's yeah there's a man and a woman adam and eve but the greater truth there the greater rep, the greater thing it represents is christ and his church the bride so we're the living we're 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 living we're alive because we're alive in christ everyone else if you're not in christ you're dead you're a walking zombie you're a dead man walking dead man walking isn't that a movie yeah yeah you have to be born again this is, is there anywhere where adam translation, and eve but, uh... <laughs> Uh, the easy reading version of Acts 17 26 puts it this way it says, God began by making one man, and from him he made all different people who live everywhere in the world. He decided exactly where they live. That's how the letter puts it. Um, he made also one blood every nation of men to dwell upon all the face of earth, having ordained times before appointed in the bounds of their dwelling. Oh, was it 1 Corinthians 15? 
talks about the, the first atom and the last atom, or the first atom and the second atom, right? Talking about Adam from Genesis and then Jesus. Romans, Say that Romans. Again. well, First Corinthians fifteen, I think, talks about the first atom, the second atom, or the first atom and the last atom. The yeah, first, yeah. Atom, obviously, what we're reading here in Genesis, and the second one or the last one being Jesus, a reference to Jesus. Um, and uh, Romans five is another one. Uh, sin, sin entered the world; death entered the world through one man, right? Through Adam. Yeah. So then, what? So then, why did Cain murder? Who who enticed Cain? If the serpent beguiled Eve and Adam, and then they give birth to Cain, right? Like we always say, you're of your father. You know, he was a murderer from the beginning. We look at Cain as if he was the first murderer, which, okay, he's the first murderer we know of, but sin entered. That's where the murder actually happened. That's where the death occurred, right? Because in dying, you shall die, he told Adam. And then that was passed on to all, all, all the rest of the people. So sin entered in, where's the scripture? It says, that, yeah, that you just said sin. So, so because of Adam, sin entered in the world. So Cain had sin. So sin is in the flesh. So, and, and that's why he warned Cain look, sin, or whatever, or the sin offering is crouching, right? It wants wants to have you. So I think we can't say there's this devil out there um, that we can blame the sin on. That That's why I have to be an uh, anti-Satan preacher, because you can't blame the devil. You, you mean you're a Satan, Satan to Satan? I'm a Satan. Uh, I, I, you can't blame some spook out there where where's the spook and Cain's we don't see any story that no serpent came along and whispered to Cain hey go out and murder your brother no where was the serpent where was this deceiver that caused Cain to sin and murder his brother well he's not there it doesn't say you know anything it doesn't say anything about it says sin entered the world through one man not through some one snake it says sin entered the world through one person, a man. Huh. Get it? No, I don't know if Sandy was on. Didn't enter in through. Uh, it didn't enter in through a Satan, through some fallen angel. It doesn't say sin entered the world through the deceiving actions of a fallen angel known as Lucifer. It doesn't say any of that. Totally gives all credit to sin entering the world to one man. Who did? Uh, who who was the serpent? I don't think you were on here. Who who do you, who do you say that the serpent is in Genesis three? Uh, well, it it it's a serpent because it's an analogy. It could it could refer to a person. It could be whomever wants to twist God's truth and convince you of a lie to deceive you. That person would be a serpent, which we see in the New Testament that I'm calling the Sadducees and the Pharisees, a brood of vipers and serpents and whatnot. So, so it's people, it could be, but uh, the Jewish, the Jewish people believe that it's the evil inclination. And I think Paul talks about it. It's the sin, sin that is in flesh and it's sin itself, right? There's another scripture that talks about so that God, so that God could reveal how utterly sinful sin is, right? So, Sin is utterly sinful, like it's the bottomless pit. And that, that is the enemy of God, sin itself. And Christ came, right? What did he do on the cross that he defeated this, this, this serpent or this sin? How did he cast the enemy of God? How did he defeat the enemy of God? By becoming pierced in his flesh. Right. And that was the veil that was torn that allowed us to enter in. See, there's no serpent story. There's no snake there. It, it, so, if there's a snake, it's in our flesh. She does bring up a good point about Christ. Uh, okay. Adam sinned, right? In the flesh. 
then Christ is crucified in the flesh, but there is no like mention of the snake in his crucifixion story. Well, I'm I'm still just wondering. So, so who who are y'all saying, or who what what are you saying that the serpent is? It represents. It could represent a person who whoever, like the Sadducees or Pharisees, whoever is an enemy of God, is a serpent, is a is a brood of vipers, is because the serpent is the thing that deceives. It twists. It twists the word of God and it deceives. So it's a liar, it's a murderer, it's all these things. So it could be a person, but that person is you. <laughs> You're that person. I'm that person. We we are that person, right? And and why? Because we're influenced sometimes by outside influence, right? People, even even well well meaning people that don't know the truth, teach it to us, and then what? I mean. How many Catholics do you know that become atheists, right? Like they're they're told a lie, you know, and then we just get so twisted up that we just go, you know what? I'm just going to be an atheist. There is no God because it's all these stupid fairy tale stories and twisting of the truth that's not believable. So then we just don't believe it. Like, okay, it's the evil inclination. It's an evil inclination. I think it comes from free will. That's what the rabbi said. Quiet. And I searched that it's before. quiet room. Oh, quiet room? You want me to leave? <laughs> if you're going to talk. Oh, jeez. Because I'm going to bed. I can't talk anymore. Well, uh, I guess there's more I could bring up, but I, I don't want to go back. I don't want to keep harping on Genesis 3 because I know we've already been through it. So we'll just keep going here. Um Anything else in Genesis 4 through the first 16 verses before we finish out the chapter? Um, I guess just to jump on a little bit while we're on the front of there for a moment. Just sort of read some easy reading. I mean, it's I'm just a good part real quick. Yeah. So, I mean, everyone had sin after Adam, right? Um, when we say everyone had sin, do we mean that every person who's ever been born? Let me ask this differently. After Adam, was everyone perfect? Yes, I, I think there's a verse in Ecclesiastes or Proverbs that says God makes man upright. I don't. I don't think. Uh, I don't think people are born with inheriting Adam's sin or. I don't think I don't think babies come out of the womb guilty of Adam's sin or their parents' sin, and I don't think there's any sins that one-day-old babies are doing that, that I'm aware of. Sure. Well, I'll just hold off on my comment. But um, yeah, yeah, but those babies grow up. Oh, sure. And you, and how would you how would you put what you just said? How would you reckon that with in Adam, I'll die? Yeah, if you're living like Adam, so the, you're gonna so the die. baby, the baby is alive. It's not old enough to have actually consciously sin. I would agree, but well, Paul says I, I would guess want that lie. would get into the age of accountability, maybe. Yes, and Paul Paul talks about in Romans how he was once alive apart from the law, you know, but then he died. Right. Sin came, he died. So, yeah, I mean, at some point, every I mean, if a person lives long enough, at some point, we all sin except Jesus. Now, I think that verse in Romans 5 says, Through one man, sin entered the world, and death through sin. So, death, death passed to all men. I don't think it says sin passed to all men. 
I don't think sin is something that gets passed from person to person. Like Ezekiel 18, the soul that sins will die. No one, no one else is punished for my sin except me, and vice versa. Well, there you go. How can you, how can you blame uh, the devil then? How can he be responsible for what you, if you sin, you die? See, that's what I'm saying. Adam, he said to the serpent, because you've done this, you're going to eat dust. What? But uh, Adam's going to toil and in, in eating the day that they eat thereof and dying, they shall die. Why, why didn't he say that to the serpent? Why didn't he say to the serpent, dying, you shall die? Because if the serpent is the devil and Satan, well, isn't that the one we want to have actually die and be dead so that the rest of us could live? So it doesn't, it, you see? Did you know there's a verse in the Bible that says basically some people have lied in their mom's belly? Yeah, so I think it's in Psalms, isn't it? You know, there's another scripture in the Bible where the Lord says that his prophets prophesy saying, thus saith the Lord when I have not spoken. <laughs> so watch out when you read something in the Old Testament quoted as thus saith the Lord. And it's, oh, so it's in Samuel that, oh, the Lord said, it. no, that, that prophet could have been a liar. Yeah, I mean, like when well, when you're when you're reading things like in the Psalms and stuff, especially where it talks about like babies have poison like cobras and fangs like lions, it's like what? I, I don't think we, yeah, there's there's verses like that. I don't think that we would take those things literal. I think we would all understand it's poetic, hyperbolic language. Babies have poisonous blood like vipers yeah. and fangs. Oh, I. I that's not ringing a bell. <laughs> yeah, it's in Psalm. Like, I, pro I, mean, I probably I, still I to this day have not read every word in the Old Testament, perhaps. I mean, I don't know. Let's see. Some of those books are pretty long. I probably never actually made it all the way through them. <laughs> That's in the Psalms. That's strange. Well, let's see. Where is the verse? So what did we decide? Cain is guilty for his own sin. Yeah, I don't. I don't think anybody would say he's not guilty for his sin. Let's see where are we at in Genesis 4. What's that, Rob? Oh, did you want to keep reading in Genesis 4? Yeah, I was just trying to find this verse here. Um, Another thing I, I was going to mention, uh, some people think Cain and Abel were like 130 when they killed each other. Oh, or, oh. oh here. Uh, killed Abel. So they would have had like lots of other humans during that time. Right. That, that would make sense. Um, yeah, it, it was uh, Psalm 58. Psalm 58 from verse 3, even from the birth, even from birth, the wicked go astray. From the womb, they are wayward, spreading lies. Their venom is like the venom of a snake, like that of a cobra that has stopped its ears, that will not heed the tune of the charmer, however skillful skillful the enchanter may be. Break the teeth in their mouths, O oh God, Lord, tear out the fangs of those lions. Let them vanish like water that flows away. Uh, yeah, like I said, I don't think that's implying everyone, but some people. Yeah, it says even even from birth, the wicked go astray. Because if it was everyone, God would have to kill everyone. 
seems to be the bunch that come Oh, out. oh, absolutely. Well, see, that's the, that's the problem. Like with, with Calvinists, all you have to do if you're talking to a Calvinist is read the next verse or read the verse before it. That, that, that's literally all you have to do. J just just read the verse before or after, or, or at least just finish the chapter, and it's going to show that what they're saying is not right. Like, Because look, they, they would read this and say, oh, this is everybody. We're all born with Adam's sin because it says, you know, what it says here about babies. Well, finish the chapter. It says in verse 10, the righteous will be glad. Wait a minute. I thought y'all always say there's none righteous, no, not one. They, they love to quote Romans 3, all have sinned. There's none righteous, no, not one. Why is this? Why is this chapter that's talking about baby sinning? Why is it talking about the righteous people? Isn't that uh, uh, a Calvinist position that uh, babies are born sinners? Yeah, like total they depravity or whatever. Uh huh. Yeah, total depravity. I I, I know I know Zach used to uh, be into that, but thankfully he's not anymore. Paper in a diaper. I mean, all, oh, literally, and where literally, does evil where does evil come from according to the bible look i'm reading this i don't know if you guys read this article that uh albert posted up but it's just phenomenal i think so do you know where, where that, uh, uh, it says it says that uh, explains that evil comes from the heart Ecclesiastes 7 9, the heart of the sons of men is fully set within them to do evil. So, uh, it's interesting. The headline of this one is clean, created me a clean heart, O oh God. But uh, in Psalm 51 5, it says, I was born to do wrong, a sinner before I left my mother's womb. And later it says, uh, create. God create a pure heart in me, make my spirit strong again. But uh, is that an implication that we're born? Does that seem to be you know, David you know, is representing the righteous? Uh, Here's another I've, got, one. I've, I've, I've got a he I got a, he a heading thing over my uh, over th this translation. It says a Psalm of David when the prophet Nathan came to him after David had committed adultery with Bathsheba. Right, but it's saying uh -huh. that he was born to do this before he even left his mom's womb. He was born a sinner. Uh, what what verse? Uh, Are you saying five. that 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 means he was destined to? I'm not sure. Is that what like it means? as if he was, was that he was pre-programmed uh, or destined to? Oh. Right, like because David's saying this that about everyone's himself. born into sin. Yeah, because David's saying this about himself. Some people think that this means all people. Well, again, well here's again, another. I, here's I, I don't, another. I don't think that's literal with David either. It's exaggerated poetic language. But... Okay, the devil. If you go back to the Greek diabolos, it means accuser. So he's the accuser, right? And then where is it? Isaiah fifty-eight. Or no, uh, Isaiah 59, verse 12. For our transgressions are multiplied before thee, and our sins testify against us. Oh. For our transgressions are with us, and as for our iniquities, we know them. So it's our sins that, that testify against us, see? And if it's the devil that's the accuser, well, because we all know right we all self-condemn right we all we all know when we've done wrong where does that condemnation come from because jesus says he, he he's not the condemner right he didn't look come the into next, the world to condemn the world look at the next verse rob uh, you want me to be complete or also put true wisdom deep inside of me can you reread that you want me to be completely loyal, so put true wisdom deep inside of me. I, I guess the thing that I would think about, you know, the, the verse that John Law always brings up, 1 John 3, 4, sin is transgression of the law. You know, I can't think of a law that a child breaks by being born. Well, see, d d this just shows that this is poetic, because if you look, it, it, this says, surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. 
yet you desired faithfulness even in the womb. You taught me wisdom in that secret place. What wisdom was God teaching David when he was in the womb? We may never know. That sounds very, very deep. That's on another level. I mean, if we're going to say that the, the first part the about secret him, place? Him the, 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 yeah, like like when you're in the womb. Yeah, it's the same. That's a womb. secret place? Yeah. I, I, they, 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 your they didn't have technology and stuff back then like what we have. <laughs> there, there, there wasn't no, let's go see if it's a boy or a girl, you know, like we can do today. No, you had to pick up two rods. And what was that, Lori? You can't, you still can't see what it's thinking, no matter how that's mm -hmm. still between you and the Lord. Right? Nobody knows what's going on in your mind. Oh, yeah, that, that, that's, that's true at, at any age. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. First Corinthians 2 tells us that uh, nobody knows the thoughts of man except the spirit within man. Although some people don't believe man has a spirit, but that's another another topic for another day. Um, I mean, uh, if, you know, just thinking about abortion or whatever, if a baby was, you know, sinful uh, by nature, then they would never have the chance to hear God. So then all babies will be damned to hell. So it just makes absolutely no sense. Yeah, and, I, and I'm still waiting for somebody to, to explain to me. Okay, let's think about this. What sins they do? What what sins they're committing? Well, a child. Well, how does that go when a child is left unto himself? What is it? How does it go? Um, it's a road for destruction. Oh, so the devils. Yeah. So, if we don't raise up in the child. In the way he should go. I, idle hands are devil's plaything. So we are, in a sense, God to our children. Now, whatever yes. kind of God is. So, and then they grow up. Well, maybe that's what Adam and, and Eve that's did, how why they, they raised Cain. And that's how they view God as to how they were raised, in my opinion. Like if you had a terrible father. That makes sense. That's how you view God. Evil begets evil. So mm -hmm. are they held accountable? I don't know. I'd seen some pretty snot nosed brats in my day. Um, but I don't I think the parent is held accountable, I would think. Yeah, at least until twenty in the old testament. So that's just what, what what I think. We're held well, accountable. Think about this. Because we all look what back man? as parents and we wish, you know, we all have 2020 vision when we look back. I wish back I look back on I think, man, I wish I'd have done this or I uh, oh if I'd only done that, you know? If somebody had raised me to actually think, to be a critical thinker, <laughs> I, then maybe maybe life would have been different. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Amen, sister. And think so about sense, when Jesus. Go ahead. Go oh, ahead, Sandy. I... Well, maybe, maybe, uh, you know, that's why we don't have any stories about Jesus as a kid. Who knows? Why? You know, well, just that, you know, under the age of when we first learn about Jesus is potentially a age of some type of accountability. Uh -huh. Yeah. How, I mean, when is the, the only first, example I mean, we, have we have is when he's 12. When he's a baby. When he's 12 years when old. he's 12. That's it. When 12 is yeah, a pretty he, important number in the Bible, too. And he's taken before the priest. Well, he's remember he disobeys his mom or whatever, gets lost, stays it there, and he goes, "Well, I'm, I'm here to do my father's will or whatever." 
yeah, you should have known. I think he even says something like that. You should have so, known. you know, it sounds like he business. knew. It sounds like he knew who he was to me. Even at that age. Even at 12, yeah, he was saying, you should have known I was being my father's house. That's right. About my father's business or something. Yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, can you even remember when you were 12? I think I was 11 or 12 when when I had, uh, I think it was probably the Mormons, because we had the Mormon church in Bellevue. But they came knocking on the door, kind of like the Jehovah Witnesses do. And since my parents weren't home, they wouldn't come in, which is honorable. But um, So they asked when, you know, when my parents would be home, and I told them, and they came back. And then I asked my dad if they could come in. We sat in the front living room and they walked me through the whole Jesus prayer and everything, which, I mean, I already knew about the Lord even before then. But that, that was like the official salvation prayer. The first time I ever said that, you know, God saved me prayer. I, but I, I had prayed to God and watched my mom. And so I think there is a, something to be said about the way you're raised and taught like can you be accountable for something you're it's almost like your brain you could be brainwashed right like why why are people in israel uh you know or or you know could you could you imagine uh raising up your child to hate another people group and to be like murderous towards them <laughs> you know what i mean even to strap bombs on yourself just so you can blow up other people like they, they think they're having a holy war I think they're fighting for God doing this. But oh, what if you're raised kind of that way? And he shows up at the age of 12 and then like disappears for like, we don't hear about him again for like 18 years. Uh, maybe that's because there, there was nothing about that specific time period that we need to know about. How he say, how how he accomplished God's plan of redemption and how th information about him that we need to know so that we can be saved. And all that stuff we learn during his ministry. Well, I was just thinking right, because it's his ministry, kids, and it's. I was just thinking, okay, parents, you know, I got to take my kid to Sunday school and all this stuff, but it doesn't seem like we see Jesus getting into the church until the age of 12 potentially and then what time what age is a priest the age of 30 so it seems like maybe we shouldn't be such a rush to pressure our kids but and teach them when they're old enough to understand the bible but if they're not taught when they're young well i'm saying 12 is young uh, is there anything in the Old Testament, in the law, about when a child should be going to synagogue? Well, well they're supposed there, to be there, circumcised there, there, on the eighth whole, day. Uh, yeah, yeah, eighth day circumcision. But there, there's a whole lot about the number twenty in the Old Testament. Twenty is when they were held accountable. Twenty is when they when they could go off to war. When they go off to war, twenty is when uh, or twenty is yeah, like for the census taken uh, that they weren't counted unless they were twenty or older. Twenty, uh, twenty is how, twenty. Twenty is how old you well. Twenty is how old you had to be to be uh, working in the temp, uh, in the temple. I think uh, in the days of David. I think David said like the Levites had to be twenty years old. Who was raised in the temple? Samuel? Oh, Dad. Was it Samuel? Wasn't Eli. He? Eli, maybe. One of them was raised in the temple. Have we ever seen examples of children in the church in the Bible or in the synagogues? No. He you says, see... I have little children to come unto me. Exactly. Like, so I think that shows like they're innocent. That's why that's why you never see children getting baptized. Oh, there's another good one. Yeah, you, you don't really re re hear about children being baptized. They don't. They don't need to be. 
they're hmm. innocent. They're they're already being welcomed into the kingdom. Like Jesus said, the kingdom belongs to these. And you have to be converted yeah. and like them, meaning you have to you you have to become innocent. Yeah. And trusting of your father. Become white as snow. Spotless. It's kind of hard to uh, grasp. <laughs> How you become clean. But I still, I still think about <clears throat> when Jesus is telling them um, he's washing their feet. He said, you're all clean, but you still have to wash your feet. What does that mean? What what verse is that where he said you still have to wash your feet? Uh, remember when he's washing the disciples' feet? And he said, you guys are clean. But yeah. you still have to wash your feet. Well, I'm trying to see where he says you still have to wash your feet. Yeah. And I know it's John 13. Well, I'm not, verse 14, uh, now I, the Lord, your teacher and teacher, have washed your feet. You should wash one another's feet. He, uh, there, I've read it. Is there somewhere else in there that the disciples get their feet washed? Another uh, Uh, let's see. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, do you, not realize, you do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, no, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then Lord Simon Peter replied, not just my feet, but my hands and head as well. Jesus answered, those who have had a bath need to only wash their feet. Their whole body is clean. And you are clean, though not every one of you. Um, when he finished washing their feet, he put his clothes on his clothes and returned to his place. Uh, you should wash one another's feet. Yeah. Confess one to another. I always just think of that, you know, how people always just think um, once saved, always saved. I still think you have to go to the Lord when you. That's like saying once cleaned, always clean. No. Well, is that what you're saying? You have to, to continue watching. Well, well, the word, the word is what washes you. So yeah, it makes sense. Like, how can you, I mean, if you really love somebody, do you love them and go on and never think about them or spend time with them again? When, well, when you could? Well, I don't know like, if it's saying that so much. Sometimes I think that um, believers get themselves into a pickle, whatever you want to call it. And they never go before the Lord again. Is not that, I think sin, whether you're saved or not. Now, if you turn around and, and you've been walking with the Lord for 15 years, great, faithfully, and you fall into sin, because it happens all the time. Um, we all think we're safe. But um, you still have to come back and correct that relationship. But that's my opinion. I know there's lots out there that believe that you don't ever have to go before the Lord again. I don't but I'm not saying you're not saved, but I don't think you can have a relationship with somebody unless you correct that relationship. Even a human relationship. I think sin still has the ability 
to um, disconnect you and the Lord. It is possible. My thoughts, you know. Like, if I've done something wrong, I know that I have to go before him and talk to him about it. Well, should I end the Genesis recording or are we going to finish this chapter? I think we should just finish it up. What have we got left? Uh, like nine verses. Oh, really? Oh, maybe we should be done. It's a long one. Well, it's actually short, but we need it long. I'm not going to really do that much. Here, really. What's that, bro? I don't think there's that much to talk about in these verses. Okay, well, we, can, we, like... we, we can just go through it real quick and we can stop it whenever we want. And we can always add a little bit more when we start chapter five if we wanted to. Sure. Somebody want to read it? I can't. Hmm. Somebody. So Cain had sexual relations with his wife. She became pregnant and gave birth to a son named Enoch. Cain built a city and gave the city the same name in his, as his son Enoch. Enoch had a son named Irad. Irad had a son named Mahajel. Mahajel had a son named Methuselah. And Methuselah had a son named Lamech. Lamech married two women. One wife was named Ada, and the other was named Zillah. Ada gave birth to Jabal. Jabal was the father of people who lived in tents and earned their living by keeping cattle. Jabal was Jubal's brother. Jubal was the father of people who played the harp and flute. Zillah gave birth to Tubal Cain. Tubal Cain was the father of people who worked with bronze and iron. The sister of Tubal Cain was named Nama. Lamech said to his wives, Ada and Zillah, hear my voice. You wives of Lamech, listen to me. A man hurt me. So I killed him. I even killed a child for hitting me. The punishment for killing Cain was very bad, but the punishment for killing me will be many times worse. Adam again had sexual relations with his wife, and she gave birth to another son. She named him Seth. Eve said, God has given me another son. Cain killed Abel, but now I have Seth. Seth also had a son. He named him Enosh, and at that time, people began to pray to the Lord. why they began to pray then i mean different translations think. say began to call on the name of the lord other translations say uh people began preach preaching in the name of jehovah young young's literal translation preaching in the name of jehovah Let's see that. Some say worship. Yeah, I think that's probably the right idea, the worshiping aspect, because that phrase calling on the name of the Lord is used many times in the Old and New Testament to refer to, to worship. Why did Lamech get to marry two women? Was there a law? Sin? Was there a law that said he couldn't? I mean, there wasn't a law that said they couldn't kill either. That's true. But do do we think that? Okay, well, all right. Maybe this might be a good time to bring this up because I, I figured it would come up at some point in Genesis. Romans 2 talks about the moral law, like the, the law of conscience that God places on the Gentiles' hearts, right? Like even even with the, even people even the people who did not have the law were a law unto themselves, right? Um, in the book of Genesis, we find uh, several things that God viewed as wrong and people viewed as wrong, even though there were no specific specific laws like what we what, like what we think of like with the Ten Commandments, right? 
like murder is, was obviously wrong. Uh, Genesis chapter nine, after the flood, God tells Noah, you know, whoever sh sheds man's blood by man, his blood shall be shed. Uh, Laban or, or Jacob said uh, to Laban because Laban uh, thought Jacob stole his idols. Really, it was Rachel who did it, but Jacob didn't know that. And he said, whoever you find of all my people, whoever you find with your idols shall die because they, they viewed stealing as wrong. Homosexuality would be wrong. Was that Genesis 19? Uh, the, you know, Lot said, here's my daughters. Like, don't, don't take these men. They were trying to be with the men. And obviously, the, the sin was so great that God destroyed the city. So murder, murder, homosexuality, stealing, adultery. Uh, remember what, what the plagues and things God sent upon Abimelech and Pharaoh and those people because Abraham and Isaac, they didn't tell the truth about their wives. Uh, they, they said they said they're, that Abraham said Sarah is my sister and Isaac said Rebecca is my sister, but really it was their wives and God sent plagues and things on Pharaoh and on Abimelech until they returned the wife because adultery was wrong. So murder, adultery, stealing, homosexuality, all those things are shown to be wrong in Genesis even before you get to the law. But our, our, I don't know if we can say polygyny is the same because when you get into the law, there are actually laws and requirements surrounding specific requirements for what men should do if they have more than one wife. I don't even know why those would be in there if you know, why, why wouldn't there just be a, a, a command that says, don't do it? Like, instead of giving like, hey, if you do it, this is what you're supposed to do about it. Like, here's your restrictions and here's your requirements if you go that route. It's interesting that... Uh... So let's see, Lamech is like the fourth grandchild or something like that, the king. Uh I think he'd be the fifth. Let me make sure I count this right. Enoch Irab. Yeah, I think Lamech would be the fifth generation. Because Cain has Enoch, then Irad, then Mahujael, Methushael, and then Lamech would be fifth. It's interesting that he does it, you know, after Enoch, and then, you know, he's a descendant of Cain. I wonder if that has anything to do with it. Well, okay. We're on bed. Uh, Hi, Kitty. Hi, sweetheart. Anything else on here? Yeah. It's okay. Well, I would go to bed. It's interesting that uh, you, know, you have the two wives thing, then you have the tools, bronze, and iron. Good night. Me too. You know, if you read Enoch, you know, some of those things happened. Uh, what did and... you say? What did you say? Hey, Sound like you said. What's that? Did you say I can't? I couldn't hear you. Oh, I was saying that, uh, you know, it's interesting that Lamech married two women and then Tubal and Cain, uh, or Tubal Cain made tools of bronze and iron and this all happened after Enoch and if you read the book of Enoch you know this is about the time when 
maybe the angels taught these things. Oh, yeah. I mean, who who comes up with the idea to make a harp and a flute or tools, you know? I mean, how would they figure out, like, okay, I gotta dig in the ground, find some bronze, find some iron, and then shape a tool? It just seems a little unusual. Yeah. But then again, you know, who who thought of the first time to make peanut butter and jelly too, I guess. So. I wonder why he thought, uh, you know, he says uh, he killed a person for hurting him. You know, kind of weird that he killed someone that, you know, must have been hurt pretty bad, I guess. But and then he says, okay, if someone hurt Cain, he has been paid seven times. But if, now if they kill me, they'll be hurt 77 times. But it doesn't seem like that came from God. It seems like he just made that up. Yeah, I don't think there's any indication that it that was from God. Sandy, what do you do? Oh, am I on speaker? I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> Brushing your teeth, gargling. Dishes. <laughs> I'm trying to I'm trying to get ready for bed, but I'm not allowed to talk in the bedroom. <laughs> Well, that's, we're lucky then. <laughs> okay, so what did you say, Andrew? You think it sounds made up to? Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, I, I don't see anything in the text that would. It's kind of like what uh Rob was saying about earlier about the with with uh uh what was it? Cain being a sevenfold um, doesn't really say exactly what that is. Like it could be this or it could be that. Um, it's obviously something worse. Obviously, that obviously this guy is saying that this should be an even greater punishment for the person because he actually had justification or reasoning for doing what he did, whereas Cain didn't. But there doesn't seem to be any like Rob said. There doesn't seem to be anything in the text that would say this was something God actually said. And you know what it kind of sounds like to me? He's bragging to his wives. Mm. Like his little I mean, That's kind of, to me, it's kind of weird because, like, okay, if someone wounds you, I mean, what right does that give you to kill him? I mean, I'm kind of with you on that, Lori. Well, he just sounds like he's. He's got a big ego. That's what it kind of sounds like to me. I, Man, I mean, how, how how bad was his wound? Mm. He said something too. He pricked his fingernail. <laughs> I mean, was he on the brink of death? <laughs> Maybe he called him ugly. I guess we don't know. I mean, uh, some versions just say a man hurt me. Let's see what the Brenton says. Sometimes that's pretty good. Um, hmm, interesting. Uh, Brent doesn't say anything about you being hurt, just says, I killed a man. Do we think he killed one man or two? Uh, actually, it sounds like two in uh, Brenton. So it's consider my words because I have slain a man to my sorrow and a youth to my grief. And doesn't yeah, say anything to Brenton about him uh, being hurt. This one, uh, the Amplified says, for I have killed a man 
in brackets merely for hurting for wounding me and a boy only for striking or bruising me like that's why because i know some people say like it's just one person that he killed it's just he's just describing it in a different way like he says it and then he describes the, the same thing just with different language and maybe other people think that there were two people this one says a man and a boy I wonder how many kids Eve had. I think, uh, let me go, well, I, I won't go look it up. If I remember correctly, I thought Josephus said in his like 800 page book on the antiquity of the Jews or whatever it is, I thought he said something about tradition said it was like 30 something kids. That may be off. Twenty something. My bit. My been twenty something. Twenty something. Thirty something. I I can't remember. I mean, you gotta think they probably had a, quite a few if they lived to be nine hundred something years old. I think Adam was like nine thirty, nine thirty five, something like that. Hmm. So when was the last, when when was this when did they start getting down to a hundred years old? Who was the first one? The first one to not live not live past a hundred. Um well jo was it Joseph at the end of the book of Genesis? He wasn't didn't didn't Joseph die at a hundred and ten? How old was Abraham? I think a hundred and seven hundred hundred and seventy five, is that right? I think so. So when when what is the difference between the Septuagint? Is it a thousand years or nine hundred and some, seven hundred? Like a, like like the total time frame you mean, or per person? Yeah, the, no, the total time discrepancy between it. Seven hundred. Oh, something like that. Yeah. I wonder what the truth is. Well, the good thing is stuff like that doesn't have anything to do with whether a person saved or not, right? No. Kind of like how uh, some translations say like the children of Egypt or, or the days that they were in Egypt or until they came out was 430 years when they were, that they were in Egypt and other, other translations or other, uh, Sources will say from the time they were in Egypt and the land of Canaan, you know, it was 430 years. Um, same with Goliath. I think some some things talk about like Goliath, like was really some some sources say he was a, a lot taller than he than what some say, or some things say, say he was a lot shorter, or others say a lot. Some things have to do with like the the a lot of different. Uh, uh, different sources say different things on like the the weight like the weight of his shield or his spearhead or something things like that but again that that stuff you know doesn't really matter at the end of the day on no but it does lend it does take away some credibility right yeah i mean and it, learning stuff like that can definitely help uh help you understand things better I can't find anything like who was the first to die like under the shorter lifespan. It's very interesting. I think is it Genesis 50 say I'll look it up. I think it says Joseph was 110. Make sure that's right. Joseph dwelt in Egypt. He and his house, he and the house of his father Joseph lived 110 years. Okay, so I know a lot of people say that 120 mentioned about well, Noah. Do you guys think that's the shortening of the lives there, or do you think that was 120 years from the time it was spoken till the flood? Do we want to get into that here, or do we want to leave the YouTube viewers hanging until we get to uh, Genesis 6? 
to discuss that. We are the YouTube viewers. Oh. <laughs> You don't know a million. Hey, all predators say the world goes on forever. You don't know who's going to be listening to this a million years from now. Albert's channel, 10 billion views later. Oh, yeah. It could happen. <laughs> Number one channel. Well, if we, live, if we live forever Code and we keep listening. Year, year 3053. <laughs> I want to know. Well, well, so, 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 so do the future YouTube viewers. They want to know now, as <laughs> at the time that they're watching this. <laughs> I think what? that was 120 years to build the ark. Yeah, you got to leave people wanting more. They won't come back. The glass half full or half empty. Um. Yeah, I mean, I think I think it's it's somewhat obvious. I mean, obviously, people live past 120. Several people live past way past 120 after the flood. So. Exactly. So, where do you say about the shortening of the lives? Uh, in somewhere in Psalms, it talks about. A person being 70 years or if having strength, 80 years is like the typical lifespan, 70 or 80 years. Somewhere in Psalms. See if I can find it. Yeah, don't say yeah but it would have been by then. It what, wasn't. There seems like no indication. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I'm, I want to know where it says, hey, you guys are a mess and I'm shortening it up for you. Your days will be shortened. <laughs> Or none would be saved. <laughs> How's that for? Well, that's an interesting uh, take on that verse. <laughs> Your days are shortened. Otherwise, if you live too long, you'd have become a sinner for sure. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to try and talk my pastor into coming on. That'd be good. You say he's a partial predator? Yeah, he said he's wrestling with uh, 1 Corinthians 15. The resurrection. You know, I found some interesting things in there recently in the Greek. Um, again, even more interesting things. There's a lot of things in there that are in the, that are in the present tense that our translations mess up. There, there, there's some stuff about... Uh, you talk, there is there is a verse or two in there about the resurrection using uh, a future tense verb, but a lot of stuff in First Corinthians fifteen talking about the resurrection is actually spoken in the present tense, not future tense, which I thought was really interesting because of because of my new view about you know the first fruits already being raised into heaven when they died from thirty to seventy um, at the time Paul was writing the letter using present tense language. Is interesting. Um, All right. Guess that wraps up Genesis chapter four. Okie dokie. Closing comments before the ending of the recording. See you in Genesis 20. five next. <laughs> we'll see you in twenty thirty five. <laughs>